In the last video, we compared the two states which a person being born as a result of procreation can be said to be transitioning through. We came across four states and saw number three being an advantage over one. We also said that the apparent advantage of two over four isn't real. Let's see how that is. Let's take an example of two existing sisters, Sunita and Anita. Sunita has a passionate hobby of playing piano and she is very good at it. Hardly a day goes by without her playing piano, at least for some time. Anita, on the other hand, neither has any interest in piano, nor does she know how to play one. Having a piano can be said to be advantageous to Sunita, but we need to look into detail to find out its reality. If Sunita hadn't had a piano, she would have been deprived from fulfilling her desire to play one. So having a piano is an advantage to Sunita as compared to not having one. But this can't be said while comparing to Anita. Anita, having no interest in piano, isn't deprived of anything without one. So Sunita having a piano is not a real advantage as compared to Anita not having one. Similarly, in our original comparison, absence of pleasure in non-existing state is like absence of piano for Anita. Hence, even if presence of pleasure is an advantage for an existing person as compared to absence of pleasure for him, it isn't a real advantage when compared to a non-existing state. The net effect of this comparison shows that the person being born is always harmed as a result of procreation. It would always be better if his or her birth is avoided. Interestingly, the hedonistic debate about whether life has more pain or more pleasure has no impact on this. The same comparison and the same conclusion holds for a life with minimum pain and maximum pleasure. In this sense, therefore, we can always conclude of procreation being an immoral act.